Some time ago, I held an evangelistic crusade in the city of Newark, Ohio. I had just completed the sermon on the Sabbath Christ gave the world. I stepped down from the platform to go to the rear to greet the people, and suddenly three young men loomed up in the aisle, blocking my way in the aisle. They had been seating, seated on the front row. And one of them in a big loud voice said, Brother Joe, Brother Joe, we were disappointed tonight the way you put us back under the old covenant with that Sabbath. Don't you realize we're living under the new covenant now and we ought to keep Sunday instead of the Sabbath? Now listen, those young men were simply voicing a feeling that millions of Christians have. I found out there were ministerial students in the, in the seminary nearby. And they were really, really in earnest. They had their Bibles in hand and were very eager to have a discussion on it. Now, I needed to get to the rear to greet those people, but they wouldn't let me by. And about 50 people had heard them in their challenge to me, and they were all crowding in to hear what I was going to say and answer. So I felt like I had to stay a little bit and talk to them and give an answer to them. I don't usually like to do that, but anyway, they were very eager to talk. And so I said, well, it sounds like you young men have really studied the subject of, this, of the uh, covenants. Oh, yes, they said, we understand that. We've studied it very deeply. I said, well, that's good. Let me ask you a question. When was the old covenant set up? Oh, they said at Mount Sinai. That's when it happened. And I said, how was it ratified? Oh, they said the sprinkling of the blood of an ox. I said, that's right. I believe that too. We're in agreement. And when did the new covenant become established? Oh, they said that was at the cross at Mount, at Mount Calvary. I said, you're right. I believe that too. And how was it sealed? How was it ratified? Oh, they said the blood of Jesus did that. And I said, we're completely in harmony. I believe the same thing. Now I want you to read two verses for me. And one of the young men grabbed his Bible and opened it up. I said, you read... Hebrews 9, 17 for me. And so he read that text that I read just a moment ago where it says that, that the, the testament doesn't go into effect until the death of the testator. And he said, oh, we believe that. We don't believe it started to operate until Jesus died on the cross. I said, fine. Now I want you, and I pointed to the other young man, I want you to read Galatians 3, 14, 15. And he read there where after the death of the testator and after the covenant was ratified, nothing could be added to it and nothing could be taken away. And he said, well, I believe that. He said, we believe that. You can't change the covenant of Jesus. After he died on that cross, that set, and that sealed the covenant. Well, I said, we, we're in perfect agreement. But I do have one more question. I said, when did Sunday keeping begin? Well, they looked down and they looked at each other. And I said, well, you've had all the answers so far. Surely you know why you keep Sunday and, and when it started, don't you? Well, yeah. Uh, I said, why do you keep it? Well, in honor of the resurrection. I said, you mean that Sunday keeping did not begin until after the resurrection of Jesus? They said, yeah. I said, well, now, wait a minute. You just said that nothing could be added to the new covenant after Jesus died. And he died on Friday. And if Sunday keeping didn't begin until after Sunday, it came three days too late. And it couldn't be a part of the new covenant. And they looked at each other and they looked at me and they said, well, we'll study that and we'll see you later. And they went out very, very quickly. Why, friends, this is the greatest proof that Sunday keeping could never be a part of the new covenant. It is impossible for it to be a part of the new covenant. The Bible says that nothing could be added and nothing could be taken away after the death of the testator. And Jesus died on Friday. And even if Sunday keeping had started the day after Jesus rose, which it did not, of course. It was hundreds of years later before anybody ever kept Sunday as a Sabbath. But even if it had started the very next day after Jesus arose or the very day that he rose, it would still have come three days too late to come under the new covenant. The young men were wrong. They were wrong. Do you know something, friends? 
Jesus even instituted the communion service on Thursday night before he died so that it would be a part of the new covenant. And if he had not done that, it would not be a requirement of the new covenant for us today. Come back with me to Matthew 26. And let's notice something here very, very interesting. In Matthew 26, verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, or the blood of my new covenant. He said, This is what's going to seal my new covenant, this blood that's represented by this fruit of the vine that I'm giving to you. And yet, friends, he gave it to them on Thursday night before his blood had even been shed. He was going to die the next day. Why did he say, this is my body which is broken for you and my blood which is shed for you when it hadn't even happened yet? He did it on Thursday night, friends, in order that this beautiful m memorial service would come under the provisions of the new covenant. If he had not instituted it before he died, it could not have been a part of it. But he put it in there just so it would be. Now, if Sunday keeping was something that would be required of people, he would have announced that and introduced that and commanded that before he died in order that it would be a part of the new covenant. But it can't be. It never, never can be. 